thank you for joining me on the journey. This is Completed Christianity. So welcome back. Another episode of Being Complete. And today is fifth day, what they say. And today we're going to be taking a look at a particular ministry that's been a pretty big ministry in the Torah observant space and at one point they went way on the too far side off the road into the ditch with the with promoting people who were promoting things from the Kabbalah and the Zohar it's just that they didn't really know that's what was going on at the time I I, I believe um, and and then um, the the owner of the channel host who's who's John Pounders he um, well, went across the road and into the other ditch um, about a year ago a little over a year ago and so this is a video that I really decided I wasn't going to do but then I finally decided that it's the truth, so, you know, let the truth be the truth. So let's take a look at what we're going to talk about here today. And so, here we go. This, this particular episode, the Q&A of the true identity of Baal or Baal. And so... This is the Q&A of the Midnight Ride, Midnight Ride show that they do on the Now You See TV channel. And then they flip over here to this channel, which is the Midnight Ride, and they do the Q&A. Um, so, in this particular one, uh, then this clip, they're going to talk about how that, that uh, it's a... It's a, it's a fallacy to say that, you know, that Lord means Baal, and, or that Baal means Lord, and that there's something wrong with that. So I'll let this play, and I will, uh, I'll stop it here and there. And you know, one thing this has nothing to do with what we what you just said, but I, I see this comment a lot that Bell means Lord in English. And I think it's really important to understand the significance of Bell being a public figure, a person, actual actual thing, versus a title. Because Bell and Lord are a title. I mean, they are a title. It means it means a master of the you know owner, the the one who leads, like the king. And um, I think that that the sacred namers like to like to really like to oh, use yeah. that and push that. But we have okay, so. So it's kind of going against the idea that you shouldn't use the the term Lord um, because it refers to Baal or Baal, and then he hits okay sacred namers and and sacred namers is something you gotta you gotta define because everybody's a sacred namer because there's a sacred name and the scripture talks about a sacred name. It says that there is one name under heaven by which men might be saved and so this name we shouldn't be seeking to to change this name or or to render this name in in any other language we, and we've talked about this before i've talked about this before and we don't do this with any other thing it's like mikhail gorbachev you know well we don't change his name to like michael gordon or something like that something that's more english sounding um his name is his name and so the the biggest crowd of sacred namers is Christians because if you say that the name is anything other than Jesus the name that they've received then then you know, they they can't they can't deal with that they can't handle that because it's all about the name of Jesus the name of Jesus the name of Jesus and so they're sacred namers by definition um and and so is so are these guys because uh, because they're saying that 
that there's a particular name and and they're and they're going against other names so that's that's by definition a sacred namer um myself you know is there a sacred name yes okay um is there a particular pronunciation of that sacred name that you have to have well no there's not a particular pronunciation so like Yahweh or Yahuwah or Yahuwah you know these you know these are pronunciations all of the same name they're not a different name um, but when you take the name of the Messiah you go from Yahshua Joshua Yeshua you go from Yeshua Yahshua to Jesus that's a completely different name because it's it's something that's been transliterated into another name to create a completely different word. And not only that, it's it's then passed through, it's transliterated into Greek, then passed through Latin, and then um, anglicized, and then we have it in our modern English. So there's, there's, a, there's quite a big gap there. So let this go on. You have to understand that Baal was an actual entity. It wasn't just a title. Uh, he was just like God's an actual entity. He's not just a title. He's an actual entity. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there for people. Yeah, so. that is such a good point. And they'll, the, the Hebrew rooters have to get you out of the King James Bible to root you. Okay, so Hebrew rooters and root you. Uh, well, really by definition, these guys are still Hebrew rooters even though they wouldn't say that because Hebrew roots where does it come from it become it comes from that there's a Hebrew roots of Christianity and now other people have gone into other things people have come into Hebrew roots gone into other things like the Zohar the Kabbalah and things like that Nagamati texts and and so they they get off the path rather than what is the actual Hebrew roots in the scripture. And so, and then he says, so they can root you. And so that's, that's uh, very disrespectful. Um, I hate to say, but it's, but it's very disrespectful um, to actually what the actual definition of Hebrew roots is. And uh, they'll say, now, the names, don't you know, the name's been replaced in the King James Bible. The word Lord is a pagan name, and the word Baal means Lord, but why did he call himself Lord? Okay, so, very few times in the inspired text of the original Hebrew, very few times is, is this word Lord used and it's not used as Baal it's used as Adonai in the Hebrew and this is a in a more ancient understanding is the name of of I mean it's the usage the definition of it being of being a master and so it's not quite the same word um, as it's used here and and the father does use the word Baal of himself in Jeremiah 31, where he says, I'm, I'm a husband to you. Uh, the word husband is Baal, just like was Sarah whenever, whenever she's, she calls Abraham, Abram, her Lord. It's Baal. She says he's, he's my husband, not Lord. That's, that's just a translation error. And so... She's saying he's, his, he's her husband. And so these words, if you look them up, they have a different pronunciation phonetically, but it's the same spelling. The one is Baal and another one's Baal. So, so if you look them up in, in your uh, lexicon or even Strong's, you, you get different pronunciations for these two words. And so there is a distinction in, in the phonetic language. And so he's kind of making kind of making fun of this and let's go back and listen to it again. 
they'll the the Hebrew rooters have to get you out of the king's title. He's an actual entity, so I, I just wanted to throw that out there for people. Yeah, so. that is such a good point, and they'll the the Hebrew rooters have to get you out of the King James Bible to root you, and uh, they'll say now. The names, don't you know, the name's been replaced in the King James Bible. The word Lord is a pagan name. So he's making fun of this and the tone that he's using um, and, the, and saying, don't you know, the name's been replaced. Well, the thing is, is of, uh, and even in his own admission, it's, it's been replaced. But he's trying to say that it's okay because it's been replaced with Lord, but the name's been replaced. But the thing is, is the name is inspired in the text nearly 7,000 times. And the text says not to add to or take away. And so taking that name away, and now he's making fun of it. And that's not okay. And, and they go on to kind of say that, you know, well, it's a respect thing and to not use the name in vain and stuff like that. Well, that's a completely different issue. But the thing is, is the name in the original Hebrew text is inspired the yod he wah yod he bav Yahweh. This is inspired into the text nearly 7,000 times, 6,823 times. And this, this name, it, it's meant to be used. Uh, that's the reason he's given. It. It's only by doctrine and tradition of man that it's been removed and replaced with this title of Lord. And and so this this title of Lord it existed in the pagan traditions and not in the Hebrew and originally. And so so to to say this is okay. It's just, it's just very egregious to me. And the word Baal means Lord, but why did he call himself Lord? He was imitating the true Lord that was expressed by... So to say that what he said before in the last part of the clip, that, that Yahweh calls himself Lord, yeah, he, he really don't there's not much there's not much evidence to that the few times in the text that that you do have lord in the lower case or where it's not all in upper case and he says that maybe here in a minute he says like when you have the capital l you know you have the tetragrammaton but but it you know makes it capital all capitals when you have the tetragrammaton but um just the L capitalized when it's when it's not, and typically that word is Adonai. And so, so even even there, you have very few instances of this, but you have this overwhelming um, evidence and this overwhelming body of text of nearly seven thousand words where the the name is in the original in the inspired text the tetragrammaton but why did he call himself lord he was imitating the true lord that was expressed by the tetragrammaton which is translated lord every time in the king james bible you see lord with a capital l you know you've got the tetragrammaton it did it, uh, it is right there so I mean this is just smoke and mirrors that the Hebrew rooters use to get you out of the King James Bible because they can't teach their, their doctrine out of it okay so so you're saying it's just smoke and mirrors to, to say this because they got to get you out of the King James Bible because they can't teach their doctrine out of it that's completely false I can teach you any doctrine from any version that you want, whether it's true or false, and I can p place all kinds of scriptures out there to show that 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 you know to some unsuspecting person that that I'm right, um, even though I'm con contradicting other scriptures. If you don't know those scriptures, then or you don't know this other version, whatever, 
then 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 I sound like I'm very credible. You know, I could do this with any version and and the, and including the King James. So this is just the smoke and mirrors itself as as he's saying. Um let's go back and, and play this part again. It out there for people. Yeah. So that is such a good point. And they'll the the Hebrew rooters have to get you out of the King James Bible to root you. And uh they'll say, Now the names, don't you know, the name's been replaced in the King James Bible. The word Lord is a pagan name. And the word Baal means Lord, but why did he call himself Lord? He was imitating the true Lord. That was expressed by the Tetragrammaton, Yodei Vape, which is translated Lord. Every time in the King James Bible you see Lord with a capital L, you know you've got the Tetragrammaton. It, it, uh, it is right there. So, I mean, this is just smoke and mirrors that the Hebrew rooters use to get you out of the King James Bible because they can't teach their doctrine out of it. And, you know, and a lot of it was out of respect. I mean, the Bible says not to take the Lord's name in vain. Okay, so, so there again, he, saying that the, the, you got to get you out of the King James Bible. And so Carrico, and now Pounders, I believe, too, you know, they're King James onlyists now. And I guess Carrico always has been. And um, and so and it's to the their King James only is to the point that that the King James version is the inspired word that the version itself is inspired, um, and that is uh and and we'll probably do a two parter on this and and let this play out and address a couple of other things they say, but but the. King James Version is not inspired. It's it's a translation. It's translated by men. And and uh, you can find evidences that it's not translated very well. And it's translated with bias. So that is not inspired. And I'm going to show you a proof right here. So, right here we have King James Version, Hebrews 10, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. And so you can look it up in any lexicon. And this word where it says died, in any lexicon you'll find that, that in the Greek this is a present tense verb. And so it's it's been intentionally rendered here as past tense so as to say that the the law of Moses Moses law is is past it's it's over um, it's done away with we don't we don't have to worry about that anymore we don't, we're not concerned with that anymore and so this has been done intentionally to, to show that it's it's past tense Moses, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under the two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose you that shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden the son of the mighty one, trodden underfoot the son of the mighty one. So, in this, when you go to practically any other version other than in the NIV. I think the NIV is the only other one that translates this in the past tense. Every other version um, translates it the way it is in the Greek, which is present tense. And so in the Greek, this says something a lot different. And when we take a look at the Geneva, the Geneva Bible, um, it predates the King James by about 50 years. And so, and like the Geneva, when the pilgrims got off the Mayflower of Plymouth Rock, they had Geneva Bibles in hand. And Oliver Cromwell and his men, they had Geneva Bibles in hand. The, the Geneva Bible was the, the Bible of the Reformation. It was the Bible of the, the 16th century. And it fell out of use in the 17th century 
being replaced by the King James, and it this should have never happened. The the Geneva uh, Bible as a whole is clearly superior to the King James. Although many people like to say the opposite because the the Geneva is so much more literal and harder to read. So it says, He that despises Moses' law dieth or dies, present tense. He that despises Moses' law dies without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose you that he be worthy which treads underfoot the son of the mighty one and counts the blood of the testament as a unholy thing wherewith he was sanctified so this uh, this predates the King James and they get it right but the King James translation changes it and it's based on bias and it's based on doctrine it's not based on text and so therefore it's not inspired um and and it's it's not the it's not the bible as the king james only want to say it's it's the inspired word um it's just a translation so when you take when you take a look at this in the NASB anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the tes testimony of two or three witnesses so right there they put it in present tense just like it is in the Greek and when we look at it in the scriptures version um, which uh, like Carico and Pounders you know they They've uh, they've called this version a demonically inspired version, <laughs> but you know no ver no version is is perfect because <clears throat> it's all it all has bias that creeps in, and the King James is is not unlike any other. It's not inspired. So the, the scriptures version, anyone who has dis disregarded the Torah of Moshe dies without compassion on the witness of two or three witnesses. So, so they get it right here too. So it's, it's really just the King James and the NIV that get it wrong, if you will. But it's wrong on purpose to support a doctrine and to support a bias. And and this kind of stuff with it just being as a King James King James only as stuff, it's a it's just not just not what people present it as as it being completely inspired. It's Holy Spirit inspired as as people would say, inspired by the Ruach. No, it's. It's just a translation, and it's a flawed translation, just like all translations are flawed translations. Psalm 89, 34, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Comments of opposition are welcome. Just don't say anything dumb like we're not under the law. We're in a grace because we've been taught to use that verse outside of the bounds of its intended context. Subscribe now. Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notifications of all future videos.